Center Research Vehicle, the LLRV, was conceived in response to President, then President JFK and his decision to land on the moon within 10 years. The landing portion of the mission was not available, so a simulator had to be found slash built. As a result, three concepts evolved. One, the electronic simulator, two, a tethered device, and three, a free flight simulator. Projects were seriously started, evaluated, but over time, the NASA High Speed Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base won with a free flight project. NASA contracted with Bell Buffalo to build the machine, which would be used for test purposes and training of astronauts at the end of the program. The vehicle they developed used a CF 700 GE engine with approximately 4,200 pounds of thrust. Uh, the engine was mounted vertically in a double set of gimbals so that the vehicle could pitch, roll, and yaw without disturbing local vertical of the engine thrust. The moon is also almost atmosphere free. The mission of the Lunar Lander Research Vehicle Landing is to study one, the piloting and operating procedures for both lunar takeoff and landing on the moon. Two, look at uh, control systems, pilot displays, pilot visibility requirements, system operation, and vehicle dynamics, and use the tested and modified to train the astronaut. Since the lunar gravitational field is only one-sixth the that of our Earth, a computer would program the engine throttle to provide thrust equal to the five-sixths of the vehicle weight. Initially, a standard lift stick uh, from a helicopter and a jet throttle both being used to control thrust. The conventional center located stick for pitch and roll was provided in the cockpit. Normal rudder pedals for yaw were also used. Normal aircraft instrumentation were installed and cockpit was open with good visibility to start with but were changed later to be like the astronauts going to the moon would, would see. The LLV was fully electronic in that all signals generated by control positions were transmitted electrically on wire to the actuator to input the pilot's desires. Of the LLRV used rockets in four clusters of four each for a total of 16 to provide for complete control of pitch, roll, and yaw. Flight test started on October 30th, 1964 with the first flight being flown by Joe Walker. The flights ended in December of 1967 and the vehicles were transferred to Houston. Before transfer, a three-axis sidearm controller was installed. This three-axis controller did changed electronically with force without any direct movement of the sidearm controller. Operations were very similar to the farm I was raised on in that we were up at 3 o'clock on site at 3.30 and the crew had already pre-flighted the aircraft and knew it was ready to go. If the weather continued to hold, we would also get more than one flight off and back each day. Our record was four flights in one day. Depending on the temperature, some takeoffs would be quite gentle as the climb thrust was slowly increasing as fuel was burned off. It was hard for a pilot to build flying time since a single flight was limited to 10 minutes because of fuel. And especially if we had gone into lunar simulation and therefore the two large lift rockets would be burning peroxide ever faster and in five minutes you needed to be on the ground. The co-pilot 
was located in a motorhome modified with recorders to record the LRV data, LLRV data, with engineers watching to alert the pilot if necessary for a safe flight. Some of the strange things that we encountered, or different things perhaps, that we encountered uh, during the test uh, would, was the one was that the, uh, on liftoff, pilots would experience a loss of radio communication from just above the surface up to about 8 to 10 feet. At zero feet and above 8 to 10 foot, all radio communications worked just fine. Many reasons were postulated why, but none proven that I'm aware of. At liftoff, the attitude rockets would fire and make a unique popping, sharp popping noise. The concrete ramp was about 20 years old and dried out at Edwards Air Force Base where these tests were being conducted. They experienced the fact that the concrete would explode when subjected to the heat generated by takeoff power. To prevent this, a circular shaped armored steel plate was placed at the takeoff site. This steel plate was raised up from the concrete a few inches to allow for air circulation. This cured the problem. When you have reached the desired altitude and switched into lunar simulation, the nose noise level would drop and you had a sensation of floating. Your airspeed indicator is not functional at so speed, so an anemometer was installed to provide the pilot with airspeed and direction, especially at zero to 40 knots. Response to the rocket controlled input appears to be nearly instantaneous when compared to a helicopter controlled input of the same magnitude. Rockets are better. If you tilt the helicopter five degrees nose down, you will get a certain acceleration uh, horizontally. When you get to the moon's 1.6 g, you will need to tilt the LRV approximately 30 degrees to get the same acceleration on the moon. Patience is the key to low gravity moon operation since the attitude of the vehicle can be changed much faster than the airspeed vector, i.e. you can be pointed south but still going north. The LLRV test program was flown with a zero-zero ejection seat. Changing out the emergency lift rockets and the canister chute on the instrumentation deck resulted in lower operating weight. This weight savings permitted the seat to be upgraded to a zero minus 50 foot per second seat and shortened the eject seat checklist to just pull the handle. I was born in 1925 in Brayton, Iowa of uh, immigrant parents from Germany. And I grew there and went to a, a one-room schoolhouse for eight years before going to high school. And uh, so all along, I was very interested in aviation, starting from about uh, five or six. And when my brother went to Randolph Field, Texas, for basic training in, in aviation. And uh, since I was the youngest, he always uh, addressed his letters to me, so I had a special affection for him. And he did graduate, became a pilot of the U.S. Army Air Corps in the second, in 1937.